Hey, Dan Cochimilio here with NorCal Sports Network with another video, this time on Scott Boris's free agents and where I think they will go and how much they'll sign for. Scott Boris has 18 free agents this year, but I'm going to only cover the top five or so. You know, there's a lot of names in there that uh, people, you know, He's got the big guys, of course, but he's also got guys like Montas and Hoskins and Jay, well, Josh Bell, Joey Gallo. Some of these guys, you know, good players, but not the uh, top of the market guys. So we're going to deal with the top five. And this is going to be interesting. Boris, in my opinion, he's put out things about the Juan Soto sweepstakes and how Juan Soto is going to be waiting until he gets his deal and he's in no hurry. I got news for you. In my opinion, Juan Soto gets signed in December. I think it gets done in the winter meetings. I think there's a fever pitch for at the winter meetings, kind of like uh, a couple years ago when Aaron Judge signed with the Yankees and it was reported that he signed with the Giants, you know, the John Heyman whole arson judge thing. I was there. I was on the floor at the uh, hotel there in San Diego, walking the floor, and there became an immediate buzz for what uh, was uh, like, it became euphoric almost. It was like there was something happening, and for about 30 minutes, I could uh, see what was happening everything was the talk i saw Heyman walking the hallways uh, frantically i saw susan slusser with him talking to him of the san francisco chronicle trying to get the deal she thought it was done with with judge and she's trying to run back and forth they're going up and down the elevator and uh, it was pretty wild so i think it's going to be that way this year with surrounding juan soto and I think he will be the first big domino to fall. And when he goes, everything else will start going. And I don't think Boris, Boris knows that. And he's going to put it on the uh, owners. The owners are going to have to ante up. And it's going to become a bidding war. And it's going to be, I think, between the Mets and the Yankees. The Dodgers could get in there as well as a player. Get uh, The rumors could start flying around that the Dodgers are involved and the Giants are involved, and Boris will play this thing up and make it get very, very exciting. And, and a couple of these guys will really not be players, but they'll be getting the, – they're thinking they're players. The Giants will probably think they're players, and they're not. They're just getting used. The Dodgers will be pushing it up, knowing they may not even be involved unless Soto really has made it clear that he wants to play for the Dodgers because he wants to win every year. And in that case, he could end up with the Dodgers with less money. If he ends up with the Dodgers, I could see it being under $700 million in the sixes. If he ends up with one of the New York teams, I think it topples $700 million. And he breaks the record of Shohei Otani's seven hundred million, even though a lot of that's deferred, the majority. But I see this as going down to the Mets and Steve Cohn and the Yankees, Hal Steinbrenner, and you could almost flip a coin. I really don't know which way it's going to go. Well, of course, none of us do, except uh, Juan Soto will. And Boris will be the ones that know, but maybe they don't even really know. They're going to wait and play this out. But I, my gut tells me that he wants to go back to the Yankees, kind of like Judge did, because it's such an iconic franchise. It's the pinstripes. It's the short porch in right field. And it's playing with Judge and batting in front of Judge and seeing great pitches you know, for the foreseeable future, the next seven, eight years. But I'm going to say Mets. I'm going to say 14 years. New York Mets get it done, 705. 
the Yankees don't want to go much over six twenty five six fifty. That just that's that's just my gut. Now it could be either team. I think it's either one. But if for picking a, a team for this purpose, I'll take the Mets. But I wouldn't be shocked if it's the Yankees. Okay, number two on the board, Corbin Burns, Baltimore Orioles. Where does he sign? This is tough because Burns could end up anywhere. He could end up in the Dodgers. He could end up with the Giants. Or he could stay on the East Coast and stay with Baltimore or maybe even the Red Sox. The Mets could be talking to him. The Yankees. It's going to be one of those teams I mentioned. Out West, it's Dodgers-Giants. In the East, it's baltimore the two New York teams, and the Red Sox. I'm going to say Baltimore ponies up and goes seven full years. And they're going to keep that AAV under 30, and they'll get him at about 225. Baltimore wants to win a World Series, and they know they need a stud, an ace, And he's played with them for the past year, so I think he stays. Blake Snell, he's my number three Scott Boris um, player. And I think Blake gets about five years. And I think he gets right around 150-ish, 155. And I think when he gets that deal, he's going to take it. He's not going to delay. That's $30 million. That's right about what he got last year with the San Francisco Giants. Here's, here's the other surprise. I think Blake Snell, I think the Mets land Soto and Blake Snell. They're going to lose Manai, I think. So Blake Snell to the Mets, five years, 150, 155. Free agent number four on the list. Let's go with Pete Alonzo. Pete Alonzo, I think, stays in New York, but I think it's with the New York Yankees. They replace Anthony Rizzo with Pete Alonzo. Now, if the Mets re- don't get Soto and the Yankees retain Soto, I think Alonzo stays with the Mets. But because I'm going to pick Soto for the Mets, I'm going to say the Yankees get Pete Alonso six years, $175 million. And my fifth and final free agent, top five of Scott Boris' clients, Alex Bregman. Going to get courted by a lot of teams, but in the end, I think the Astros retain him. And I think he gets six years, $160 million. Matt Chapman a, is a Scott Boris, uh, is his agent. Chapman's the client there. And he got six years, 151 with the Giants. So Matt Chapman, toward the end of the 24 season, got it done, a deal done to re sign with the Giants. And that set the market. That sets the market for Bregman, a third baseman who's been a more productive hitter, not as good as in the field, not too many as good as Chapman at third base. But in the plate, Bregman's been a much more effective, productive hitter than Matt Chapman. So I say Alex Bregman gets 6-160 with the uh, Astros. If he leaves, the Astros and go somewhere else. He could end up somewhere like Detroit. Um, and he might get a little bit more. He might get six, 170 ish. Okay. But I think he takes the deal with the Astros a little bit less around the 160 mark, six years. And uh, that's, that's my uh, final makeup there. Call guy guys on this. Those are my five guys of Scott Boris. 
Tell me what you think. Make your comments below in the comments section. Let us know what you think of those five. Maybe I'm way off. Hey, if I can get two of the five, I would be feel like I did pretty good. I could go over five on these picks. It's a tough call, but uh, I think a lot of these teams stay, guys stay with themselves. I think Blake Snell ends up on the East Coast, either with the Mets or Red Sox, but I'm I'm picking the Mets. So the Mets get two of the five, five of Boris clients. So again, tell us what you think. Hit the like and subscribe button. We're here, NorCal Sports Network. We cover everything from in the Northern California sports area, but we call, cover nationally sports as well. That's, you know, Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA basketball. Check out our videos. Hit the like and subscribe button. Tell us exactly your thoughts on this. And uh, we really appreciate you uh, taking your time to watch this video. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Really appreciate it. Take care.